All right, let's get started. We're gonna try with something I've never seen anyone else use before. This is a number 18 Rapella. It's a purple trout color. I used to use these for, uh, well, originally up in upstate New York for trout. I mean, uh, used to try to use these for northern pike. I said, you know, big baits, northern pike, and the rivers I would fish and a lot of walleye in them. Go figure. I started catching more and bigger walleye with this lure than uh, anything that I'd ever thrown before. It was like a, a bizarre and amazing accident. I developed a pattern with these where we caught so many walleye and some giants. 9, 10, 11, 12 pound walleye on a place that was unheard of. And it just continued to work for other species too. Anything from smallmouth bass, bass largemouth bass, even big uh, brown trout. So I know these trout get real aggressive. I have a theory that this is going to work the same way it did for walleye. It's going to catch normal size 18 to 22 inch trout, but I have a feeling it's going to increase the odds of hookups with gators, with giants, just like it did with walleye. They're opportunistic feeders. If they get a chance at a big bait, they'd much rather spend, uh, use their energy on a, a big bait compared to a bunch of little tiny ones. So we're going to put that to the test today. This is the perfect place to do it because there's a lot of trout and there are some giants here. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a troll until I can pick up a fish and then we'll start casting. The other one is the old tried and true uh, six inch or five inch uh, plastic mirror lure. There was fish being caught all along this bridge from where I'm at all the way down the end. There is one boat here now, which is all the way down on the other side. It's just amazing to me, and this is something to take note of. I, I've known this for a long time, but this is, this is invaluable information here. You fish mornings on the weekends, middle of the day on the weekends, places like this, you're gonna have to be very crowded. There's a ton of people fishing here. You go Sunday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, there'll be less than half of those people there, probably a quarter. You do that same thing on a weekday, there's one other boat here. When yesterday there was at least 11 to 15 boats here. The day before that on Saturday, it was I heard it was somewhere around 30. So uh, we still caught fish fighting with the crowds, but you up your chances of uh, being the only person out there when you go in the afternoon, especially on the weekdays. But yeah, the freedom we have here. Right? Before there's so many boats you couldn't troll like this. I, I had the freedom to fish any way I want now. I can troll up and down this, I can cast anywhere, and not get anyone's, anyone's way. We ought to be able to uh, get down some fish here. We just gotta find them. Once we find them, there should be a lot in the area. They're either gonna be tight to the bridge, out 20, 30 feet, or even out 50 to 100 feet, or they could just be spread out all over in that bulk. Yesterday, they seemed to be both right next to the bridge, off a little bit, and then ways away. They're just scattered. So let's see, we got a very unorthodox bait here, and the old tried and true mirror lure here. And another thing I noticed with the fish yesterday here is they seem to be not very far down. And once I find some, I'm going to be casting everybody's favorite. Martin King. Make sure I got my drag set. These be tight enough to hook, set the hook good, but loose enough for them to really take it if we get a big one. All right, I got one with the big 18 Rapala. This is with the 18 Rapala. Got the mirror lure out, and what gets hit? 18. Feels like a very nice fish, too. First try with this 18, and it, it worked. <laughs> Let's see what we got. How big is it? Like I said, I have a, I have a feeling normal size trout will hit. It looks like a nice trout. Very nice trout. Very nice trout right there. Oh yeah, look at the size of this one. That's a good one. Look at this. I got hit first, just like I thought. I mean, that's, that's a very nice trout right there. Hit that 18 repel, and I am keeping four. I never keep my limit, very rarely. Uh, keeping some for myself, but I'm also gonna keep two for a friend as a favor. They don't fish, but they like to eat fish. 
And I normally never keep fish for people, but sometimes you gotta bless people with your gift. Let's see, real quick, I'm guessing that's a 19 inch truck. Just shy of 20. Just shy of 20 inches. How about that? I caught three over, three over 20 so far today. Wow. Mirror lures. Mirror lures. Yeah. Yeah, I just been anchoring and they're like back that way, it seems like. You're like coming up current. That's interesting. I might have been trolling way too close. I usually do that to try to figure out where they're at and then right, start right, right, homing right. things in on them. Yeah, let's check this out. You mind being on YouTube? Oh my God, dude, that's a stud. Really? You're good, you're good. Yeah, he's fighting you good. Bro, that's... Ha, nice. That's awesome. Heck yes. <laughs> awesome job. Nice. Yeah. I ain't even keeping any today. That's a beauty. Well, if you want to check it out, um, it'll be on Dave Fish 84. What's that? YouTube? Yep. Oh, sick. Yep. Yeah. What is it? Da Dave, like D A V E, Fish yeah. 84. Dave Fish 84. Yeah, I got to add that, and that was just. You know, it's not every day I get schooled like this, but after Adam caught that fish, we had a great conversation and within a 10 minute period, it got dark, but within that time frame, he caught another five at least trout, one after another after another on a little 17 mirror lure. Now I'm just getting into these hard plastic mirror lures. They are the thing. Everyone uses them, they're super popular. They definitely work. I tied one on, tried, but I had to position my kayak towards the current, which is towards the bridge. And I was like fishing behind me, it was really awkward. And with that time period of 10 minutes, I just couldn't get it figured out. I think I missed one. But wow, Adam, you did incredible there. What a bite that was. I wish I could have get out, could have got in on that as well. But there will be another day. And thank you so much for giving me a couple trout so we could do this recipe. This recipe right here is a game changer. If you're sick and tired of having fish the same exact way every time, I will have so many unique recipes on this channel. I just threw down a Chinese egg roll recipe with my kids just yesterday that was mind-blowingly good. They all loved it. It was incredible. We'll be doing it again and again and again. But today, we're doing trout pizza. And it sounds weird, but I'm telling you, this is one of the best pizzas I've ever had. I learned how to make this stuff in China. I'm super, super good at it. You gotta check this out. All the way from how to make the dough to the, to the end product. This one here is a game changer. So uh, I've been doing this quite a while. I don't follow exact uh, ingredients. But I'm gonna show you how I make my dough real quick from scratch. You can also go buy dough from your local pizza restaurant. It's always a great way to do it too. But I'm just gonna show you a quick, easy way how to make pizza, but we're gonna do it with speckled sea trout. This is gonna be really good. Check this out. All right, check this out, super simple. They're going for about a cup and a half of flour. I eyeball it. Been doing this a while. You can do it exact science, but Really not necessary. I'd say about two and a half cups I'm gonna go for on this one. There we go. I'm not going for a giant pizza here. Just to, it's personal, it's all for me here. So once we get that in there, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of salt. I'm gonna do some garlic powder. Some oregano. You can do Italian seasoning if you had it. I'm gonna do some basil. I'm gonna take a fork and just uh, mix it all up real good. Make sure everybody's evenly distributed in there. There we go. And then next is our yeast. This is very, very important. Let me show you how to do this. All right, what you want is a bowl of hot water. Not too hot, like you don't want it to burn your finger. It's gotta feel like really nice and warm, but not hot, because it'll kill the yeast. I'm gonna take some of that yeast, I'm gonna put it in with my flour. Just some of it, maybe like 15, 20% of it in with the flour. 
before I put the rest of that yeast in there, I'm gonna take some honey. I'm gonna put the honey in the water. Mix it up real, real good. Make sure that honey is dissolved and in the water. You want that nice and sweet, something for this yeast to feed on. Now I'm gonna put that whole pack of yeast in there. Let it sit there and do its thing. You can just leave it and do nothing, or you can stir a little bit. Kind of get it going. Now what we're gonna do is let that sit for like, oh, you know, it takes anywhere from two to five minutes. I'm just gonna let it sit. You can know it's ready when it starts to foam up and bubble. It's gonna grow, like it's multiplying and getting really big. So we're gonna wait two to five minutes. I'll check on it five minutes or two minutes, three minutes. We'll see. And then we'll show you what to do after that. I want you to see what it looks like now so I can show you the difference. So this is after I just, just started it. So we're gonna see what that looks like in two minutes and uh, in three minutes and then five minutes. Now see that's what I'm talking about. Look at how foamy that's become. So that stuff is very active and very alive. We're gonna mix that in with our, with our flour right now. And then you're gonna see about the water ratio that I use for this, how I mix it up. I'm just gonna let it chill out in a warm place for one hour. You, it's better if you do 24 hours, gets more of the yeast flavor, but if you're in a pinch, you just wanna cook something real quick, you could do this in 20, 30 minutes, but I like to let it rise, give it time to develop and get some flavor. So we're gonna do that right now and let it sit for one hour. All right, so I just uh, thought I was rolling, I wasn't, I just put the, the yeast in with my dry ingredients. And now all I'm gonna do is start mixing this up. And it's going to be fairly wet is what I'm going for. And at this point, we're going to add a little bit of olive, or, uh, you can put olive oil, avocado oil. Really the best flavor for this is olive oil. So I'm going to use extra virgin olive oil. I like a lot of oil in there. So we've got our oil, we've got our yeast, water. And we keep mixing that up. Keep mixing with your spoon or your fork, or whatever it is. Get all that dry flour. Just mix it all up real good. Just like that. I'm bring it all together in one area like that. What we're gonna do next. Take more of that oil, kind of put that around in a circle. That'll keep it from sticking. <laughs> That'll keep it from sticking too much later on. And what we're gonna do now is cover that with saran wrap, and we're gonna let it sit for an hour. It's like that, and it's gonna that yeast is gonna continue to work and rise, and it's gonna make this real light and fluffy. What we want. When we cook it, so it's gonna put some saran wrap over the top. And another little cheat hack that I do is I'll turn the oven on and get it not hot, pretty warm. You want to make sure you're real careful to get the temperature. I don't know the exact temperature, but you don't want it hot. You want it warm. I'll turn the oven off. I'll put a towel over the top, just like this, and I'll put it in the oven. Or you can, if it's warm enough in your house, you can put it there. But if it's not warm in your house, you want to put it somewhere warm. like So the oven will insulate it with a little bit of heat. But we're going to let that roll there for one hour and come back to it. All right, it has been an hour. And the results are what they should be. Check this out. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. Yep, that's what we want it to do. I got my pan. That's too hot. I need, the pan needs to be warm. I put it on stove top to warm it up. It's too hot. We're gonna let it sit for about five minutes until it's warm and not hot. Then once that happens, I'm gonna take this dough, half of it, and uh, work it into this pan. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Cast iron pan, that's a trick. If you don't have a pizza oven that gets like super like a thousand degrees, this is your best friend. Cast iron pan. We're gonna get this super, super hot once uh well we're gonna put the the dough in there 
let it rise again and get perfect. I'm gonna hit the stove top real hot, put in the oven at a 550 degree oven um, for like six minutes with all the toppings on. We'll show you how to do it. All right, so I'm gonna start prepping this dough into this pan. I'm gonna angle the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna get some of that oil on my hands so this pizza dough doesn't stick to me too much. What I'm gonna do now, it's really sticky. I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on here to work with it, but I just wanna get it just right. All right, all I'm gonna do, sprinkle a little flour on the top here like that. Now I'm gonna start working with it. You wanna work in the middle and start pushing the edges out so you get a nice airy crust. And if you start seeing holes in it like that, don't worry about it, we fix that later. Not a problem at all. It's a very, very light crust. It's got a nice, or a dough. It's gonna have a nice, big, fat, air-filled crust in it. Never want to push down on those edges. You want to keep them the way they are so that the air will fill up. I'm going to take a piece from the edge there that we don't need. I'm going to patch that up just like that. Same thing over here where it's a little bit thin. Fix it like that. Let's keep working that. I just want to keep very careful with it. The yeast smell in this pizza smells so good already. All right, we're just going to let that sit there for another uh, 10 minutes while we start to prepare a fish. All right, so... Uh, we're almost ready here. I want to show you real quick what we're doing here. We are boiling some water that has one whole lemon squeezed into it with a lemon peel and about a half a cup of sugar. This is a solution we want for this fish to boil in. We're going to boil this, which is weird, right? We're going to boil sea trout. Yeah, this is called a poor man's lobster. That's how we're going to make this go on our pizza. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to cut this up into small like crab sized pieces or like lobster sized pieces. We're going to boil that for about five minutes. There, now I got that some nice bite sized pieces. I'm going to go ahead and put that. Right over here. All right, so we're gonna take our fish, and boil it in there for five minutes. It's 7.04 right now. It's actually 6.04, I didn't set my clock yet. 6.04, we're gonna go until 6.10. Now as this boils and we move it out, we wanna be very careful how we strain this because sea trout's a pretty soft fish and it's we don't want it to fall apart. We want it to keep in those nice chunk size fishes. All right, we're gonna make this really simple. A lot of times I like to make my own sauce kind of, I'll use like Hunt's tomato sauce and some uh, really good like port wine, red wine, and cook it down for quite a while, even a couple hours to really get some sweet flavors in there. Put some oregano, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic. We're doing a quick and easy. If you're just looking for a quick, easy night, just buy your own sauce somewhere. This is a good pizza sauce from a local uh, grocery store near here. And just, yeah, you can get better cheese than shredded, pre-shredded cheese. Like, I would prefer using cheese that's not already shredded. It works better, but in a pinch, works fine. So this whole thing is about making something good, but it's not going to take you a long, long time. So first off, we're putting our sauce right in the middle of the bottom. We're just going to spread that around. Maybe a little more over there. This dough has risen very nicely. 
and use my spoon to kind of push it a little more like I was with my finger earlier. I like getting that sauce up on the crust a little bit too. There we go. It's looking awesome. Poking a little hole in the bottom is not a bad thing. Get some of the air out there. There we go. That's going to be just right. It's like that. And I, got, I like using two different kinds of cheese. You can just use mozzarella, but I like adding a mixed cheese. Like I got mixed cheddar. So I'm going to mozzarella and mixed cheddar. This one I don't. Okay. So we're going to put our mozzarella in there. And then our mixed cheddar just adds a lot more flavor to the pizza. Cut some cherry tomatoes. I'm going to put those around in there. And the rest is going to be our fish. Mm. I love cherry tomatoes. They're so good. Mm. Fish is about done right now. Take that off and put it in a, a bowl on the side. All right, so very, very gently take that fish out. Set that aside. Oh, it's, you know what? It's nice and firm. Doing it like this, it, it can you can tell. Feels a bit like and this is called, uh, this recipe I'm doing is called Poor Man's Lobster. I've done this with gar, of all things. And it actually did taste like lobster. You just dip it in butter like you would uh, a steamed lobster. And it was just shockingly good. I can't imagine how good it's going to be with this. And I can't believe I've never done this with sea trout before. But we're going to have some for the pizza and some just with melted butter straight up. I think we got them all. So this uh, acidity with the sugar does something to make it more firm and it gives it that sweetness like you would have in crab meat or in lobster. It's uh, So you don't want to just boil it in regular water. You definitely want it to have, you can even add a little salt. I probably should add some salt to it, but this is going to be really good as it is. Oh yeah. It tastes great. It's going to be even better when we put some butter on All right, now we're going to take some butter. Melt it in this saucepan right here with a little bit of seasoning before we get that fish on the pizza and put in the oven. I got my, I'm gonna put my oven to 550 degrees. It's already pretty warm. I've had it on prior to this, but we're gonna heat that up to 550 before we put that pizza in there. And it's gonna melt that butter. And yes, if you if you know, you know. <laughs> It's pretty darn good stuff. That's what we're using for our seasoning. Put a little fire in there, as he would say. <laughs> Creole Cajun seasoning. We don't want to burn our butter. We're also going to put some garlic in here as well. We're going to get that butter melted down. I'm going to put a tad bit of olive oil in there. That'll keep, believe it or not, that helps keep the butter from burning. And we're going to use the olive oil on top of the pizza here shortly too. All right, I'm going to put our garlic in there. I want that to get really nice and garlicky, this butter. And I'm gonna put some more Creole seasoning in there. With the fire, a little, I like a little spice in mine. So, I'm gonna add some of that. And it's gonna be awesome. Some black pepper.
All right, everybody get to know each other. Now we're gonna add our fish to this. Very carefully move it around. Get those flavors all over that fish. We do not want to break this fish apart. So super gentle, super gentle. Very hard to do without breaking apart. I'm gonna take a little broken piece. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, awesome. All right, while the camera was off, I did add a little bit of oregano and a little bit of garlic powder to this. What I'm gonna do is place chunks of fish around on this pizza. It's so flaky. Now, I've never had fish pizza. I saw another person do this. I've had sea bass in Italian restaurants up in uh, New Jersey before with marinara sauce. It was absolutely awesome. I knew as soon as I heard about this idea of a fish pizza done with a poor man's lobster idea, this has the potential of being off the charts amazing. So you can get my honest feedback if I think it's really good or if I think, yeah, it's just okay. I'll say it the way it is. I want to load as much fish on this as I can. But I have a feeling this is going to be really, really good. The rest is like crab meat. I'm going to do something different with that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil that I always do on my pizzas. We're going to put a little bit of that sprinkled across the top. Let me get to know that cheese real good and a little bit on the crust. All right, and that's it. We're going to put that in the oven at 550 degrees. It's like crazy, crazy good. Mmm. That is an awesome way to eat trout right there. I'm going to think there's a lot of things I can think about eating with this rice. Gosh, a lot of different ways. It's almost like, almost really is like crab meat. Super good. It's all kind of like crushed up, but that's seasoned in that really awesome Creole seasoning and garlic butter. It's awesome. I can't wait to see what that's like on this pizza. All right, it's time. Check that out. Going into a 550 degree oven right now. But first. That should have been out a long time ago. In it goes. Real life. All right, let's see what we got going on here. All right, it's looking pretty good. We're gonna do now is I need that top to get even hotter. So, oh yeah, it's very fluffy and nice. We're gonna put to broil on high. And I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil around this crust and put it back in there. But this looks awesome already. See, it's hard to get the oven hot enough. I'm um, only going from the bottom when you're going conventional. So I got broil on. Now that's what I'm looking at. That's what we want. Now I'm going to finish it off. I've got the stove top super hot. We're going to get the bottom of that. The top looks perfect. Just perfect. I put some olive oil around the sides of the crust where I put it in there with a little bit of garlic powder. This is going to be killer. Killer, killer, killer. Again, I've got high heat on the stove top. It's already preheated. I'm going to let that go for just like 30 seconds 45 seconds to get the bottom nice and cr totally crispy i'm going to move it onto this rack right here to air out and cool for a little bit all right there we go i'm gonna cut it got a nice crisp to it i made it sure i chilled it enough so that well the cheese wouldn't melt everywhere 
got a really good crunch to it. Mm. Looks killer. Check that out. Are you kidding me? You gotta try your next speckled tea trout like this. I'm telling you right now, you have no idea what you're missing out on right here. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Speckled sea trout. On a pizza. It's insane. That is so, so much better than I expected. I thought, just looking at it, that's going to be really good. But it's, it's just next level. The fish is crazy, crazy good on that pizza. Hmm. I'm going to devour this entire thing right now. All right, you know I like the pizza, but I have four very critical judges here that are about to put the theory of the test. Do four of my critical judges, which are kids ranging from four to nine years old, like it? Let's find out. Listen to that crunch. Speckled trout pizza. You guys excited to try this? Yeah! Woo! -hoo! Oh! Yeah! All right. Let's see how this goes. <coughs> this is speckled trout pizza number two. Okay, who are we gonna try? Look at that piece right there. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Cherry tomato tomatoes on there with a bomb. Tozer, here you go. Don't try it. We're gonna try it all together here, okay? I know Elliot's not a big fan of the tomatoes, so we're just gonna give him one that has nothing but trout on it. Oh, kind of need to make sure it's cut all the way through. It's a good texture. Daddy, is this the trout? Mm-hmm. Let's get these last two plates, and then I want you guys to give it a shot here, and I'll have one with you. Let's see here. Get you this one here, it's got a lot of trout on it. All right, I'm gonna get you guys eating it. There we go. All right, here we go. This is the true test. I like a lot of things, I thought it was amazing, but let's see what these kids think. My real judges. It might be a little hot because we just pulled out of the oven. Well, actually, this one's been out for about 10 minutes, so should be safe. Give it a shot. I love cherry tomatoes. Yeah, cherry tomatoes are really good on there. Best pizza I've ever had in my life. Okay, like seriously, get a couple more bites in it and make sure you get some trout on there and tell me, is it compatible with that sauce? Like, is this, is this real? Trout pizza? So good! Holy smokes. My favorite pizza topping. I mean, that's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty hungry too. Wow. That dough is insane. That's... Good as any place you're gonna get. Mm. We got pepperoni going on over here. Half cheese. That's that. Poor man's lobster recipe with a sea trout. I did again on this pizza. And uh, proofs in the pudding. Look at uh, Hudson's done with his. Toes over here is doing a good job, and Elliot's almost done. Jasmine is killing it. Um, I've made things on this channel that didn't work out. Fish tacos once was an epic fail. This was an epic win. Yeah, fish pizza. Poor man's lobster recipe. Give it a shot. I hope you enjoyed this video. The fishing part, the cooking part. And as always, God bless. We'll see you in the next one.